We are live. Welcome to the review of the 2022 movie Elvis. And yeah, I'm going to be doing it a little bit different than usual. So I'm going to jump right into, so basically, plot, you know, it takes you through the life and career of Elvis starting at his childhood. We see him being inspired by black music and, you know, black church, you know, gospel, the whole, yeah. And, yeah, the, um, let's see, how do I usually, I guess this would be where I would go to the writing. This is a really great script. The, you know, it, it hits the, the high beats, the, the stuff that you really want, you know, I don't know if it's necessarily gonna, if you don't already know a lot of this stuff. I don't know how much of it is going to have much of a chance to like stick. I don't think this I I feel like some of the critics they're free to, to you know if they hate the movie that's up to them. I feel like some of them kind of approached it as if this was just like for people who don't know about the life and career of Elvis. I don't really think so. I think it's basically I I don't think Baz Luhrmann with this movie is saying, here, behold, you know, Wikipedia article of, although that's also something, you know, some people feel like it hits every single point on the Wikipedia article of him. But yeah, I don't think that's what Baz Luhrmann is saying. I think what Baz Luhrmann is saying is, so, you know Elvis, I know Elvis. We all love Elvis, let's celebrate Elvis. And, you know, do not watch this in place of, like, actually learning about, you know, before, I, I had already read that it didn't really dwell too much on a lot of the negative, and I love Elvis, but I'm, you know, there are definitely some aspects of him that, yeah. The movie doesn't really dwell on those very much, and you definitely should, you know, there's there's that joke about what if, you know, if, if, if there was only one, you know, if, if like the world, you know, if, if in, uh, if in hundreds of years from now, there was only one thing left, you know, if this was the only Elvis thing left, yeah, people wouldn't really appreciate what he was like, you know, Elvis the man, you know, the, uh, yeah. This does specifically say, you know, there was Elvis the man and Elvis the god. And yeah, this is essentially, you know, I saw someone called it a, I'm going to try to pronounce this right, because I, I usually only read that word, hagiography. Hey, yeah, that's, that's right, that's, that's, that's a very apt, you know, yeah. A, co a couple of other words that I heard, you know, people saying, okay, the movie in one word, frantic, busy, you know, yeah, those are absolutely true. But yeah, the, the script, you know, like there are some people who you don't, like by the end of the movie, there are some, some of the, you know, there, there are, I hesitate to call them characters, but there are, let's go with characters, that are in ten scenes. And by the end of the movie, like, the one thing you could say about them is they liked Elvis and they wanted to support him. And really, I mean, that's essentially, that's almost everyone, you know, there weren't that many people who really could, okay, there were some, and they had very very loud voices some of them but yeah the you know some of them they'll they'll 
they'll not really be given much of anything to say or do that isn't just they're there for Elvis. You know, and I mean, some of them you can appreciate, oh, they were there from the beginning. And some of them it's like, oh, they only came in later. But yeah, at the end of the day, you know, this is, this is Elvis' story. And yeah, moving on to direction. I think I've been in denial about how much I love Baz Luhrmann. Not, not the person, but the artist. You know, I don't know him as a person. I have watched and loved watching Moulin Rouge probably 20 times. God, that feels good to get off my chest. Romeo, Romeo plus Juliet. Ah, uh, maybe half a dozen times, but I love that movie, you know, last I watched it, it's been like 20 years, I guess, so I, I don't know, maybe some part of it aged really badly or something, but yeah, I kind of, I kind of love those two movies, I think they're, they're incredibly well cast, and the direction and editing and music and just everything, yeah, I, I found some of his other work, on Disney Plus, so I think I think I'm gonna have to start watching. Eh, not not have to, but yeah, I'm, I'm probably gonna start watching more of his, his movie. I just I get why not everybody likes him. I think it is 100% fair to say that he gets really stylistic, including at times when it doesn't really need to. But I just really think it works for these three movies, and yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be watching what else of his work is on Disney Plus. You know, certainly Moulin Rouge and Romeo Plus Juliet are on there. That wasn't where I watched them. You know, yeah, since I just said that 20 years ago. But yeah, yeah, I don't think I've watched either of those movies for maybe 20 years. Yeah, just just about twenty years. So, but yeah, I I think you know if you don't like him, this movie is not for you. This is this is like this is one hundred percent not a movie for you. This is this is like if if I think an argument could be made that if someone is like. You know, like like the the watching Baz Luhrmann movies gives them life. You know, like it's the case for me. And if they like collapse or they're in a coma or some some kind of you know, if you could inject this movie directly into the bloodstream, like full recovery. Just I I don't even care what else you were like. Why were you in a coma? Who cares? Baz Luhrmann's Elvis, and. Yeah, you know the the. I just got done watching Brad Jones's, um, yeah, review of it, Stone Gremlins. If you don't know, wait, Gremlin, singular, not plural. He points out that if you think you've seen, you know, if you think the trailer tells you the style, you ain't seen nothing yet, and it really like. There are there are glorious scene transitions. There are comic book panels. The there are. I think a strong argument could be made that this movie comes close to, at least in small doses, overusing the. Uh, a split screen or ah, not split screen. I guess a split frame kind of thing, because there's there's a point where there's like, did I count? Was there like six individual shots in the one? So I could understand why some people might find that excessive. I thought it worked incredibly well. I've seen some people say that the movie is essentially a melodrama and it doesn't really get that deep into, you know, it really, it doesn't particularly want to be critical of Elvis and it really tries to iron out, you know, like, 
one of the big things is this idea that he basically I'm, I don't know if he was the first but he was definitely one of the biggest cases of a white dude and he was white like Memphis Tennessee wait it was, it was something like that you know like very white and you know the accusation goes that he stole black music from black artists that you know these black artists themselves the white establishment would not let them you know would not give them as much yeah there were places they couldn't play at all and yeah in comes this white boy and just sings their songs and uses their sound and this kind of thing and the movie very much wants us to go away feeling he didn't take it he was essentially like like he was he was fully accepted and integrated with the black people and he would take inspiration from them and that is a very generous that is that is a generous take let's let's go with that and i'm not going to get into the the details but yeah you know it's it's a movie that really doesn't want you to think about the more negative things and yeah i i guess you know depending on how much you think about those things while watching i was about to say if you know them but i think some of the biggest ones like if you've heard the name elvis and you're not like oh and costello right wait El no <laughs> elvis costello was a person not a duo wow full disclosure i had a lot of sugar i haven't slept yet and this movie was like two hours and 40 minutes so you're gonna have to bear with me a little bit but yeah you know if you know elvis presley at all you probably know at least some of these negative things and yeah depending on how how much you of the movie you're thinking about these things you know like if you if you spend 20% of the movie thinking about those things then the movie was 80% a success because it really just wants you to be like we are we are we spend 2 hours and 40 minutes bathing in the glory that was Elvis and he really was like i've seen i saw some critics say oh you know i feel like the movie is kind of exaggerating the effect that elvis had on women dude you really don't get it trust me he like the women and statistically speaking four to ten percent of the men loved him and were like completely over the moon just could not get enough of him and yeah the 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 sexual implications that the movie makes are not exaggerated that really is like this was for a lot of young women this was the first time that there was a man in front of them that they you know we're talking like live shows and all who legitimately like made them feel sexual and yeah you know awoke those that, like if elvis came out today obviously wouldn't have the same reaction obviously not because today it is more like you know would be nicer if it would be nice if there were even more, but today there are a chunk of straight cis dudes walking around actually trying to, you know, appeal to women, not just like, you know, 
convince them let's have sex, but actually make them want sex. And that's yeah, that's that's what Elvis did. They we gotta remember how repressed sexuality was back then, especially for women, especially for young women. Yeah, yeah, young unmarried women, like. It, the 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 patriarch group was completely clamping down on every single thing there and in comes elvis and appeals to them and it is this thing of like you know these black men singing could also you know the yeah that's where you know that's where some of it came from that they were less inhibited but the or, or so the stereotype goes. I don't want to cut them from just like a yeah. The the yeah. The thing being, a lot of these young white women had been told that black men were like dangerous to them, for example, and you know there there were a lot of racist stereotypes. So when a white man did it, that was someone they were allowed to feel attracted to. But yeah, I think I've said everything I wanted to about the direction. I, I guess I'll just finish off by saying, like, I really did not feel like I spent that long watching this movie. Like, it really, you know, and, and the actually something that Brad Jones also pointed out, the... The pace is not equally fast throughout. Like, it, there's some really, really fast stuff very early on. But it does calm down a bit and also use less stylization. And so, like, it's not constant stylization, you know. Like, I... This is not... I, I didn't get a headache from watching this movie. You know, I get headaches watching Michael Bay movies... I have gotten a headache watching at least one Steven Sommers movie. I struggle to recall which of them. Probably Van Helsing. I think it was Van Helsing. Yeah. So, for sure, it's possible to go too far. It's possible to have a movie that's just noise, essentially. It's just, it just all blends together, bleeds together, and you don't really take away anything from it. It's just gray sludge. And that's just not, that's not the case here. Like, if I had to, I think I could, you know, using only this movie, I could, like, produce a short list of, like, you know, okay, so this is how Elvis started out, then this important thing happened, this important thing happened, you know. It, it, yeah. I think, yeah, that is, that is what I have to say about the direction the the characters are like Austin Butler if he doesn't get like a long career with a lot of like really distinguished performances i will be extremely surprised he did such an amazing job here. And yes, yes, part of it is, if you just look at his face, he already bears a fairly striking resemblance to the king. But he actually moves and sounds like him as well. And the, like, I, I saw, the, I watched the trailers multiple times. I, I heard him say in an interview, he studied the the these video recordings of the king of rock and roll he he noted the the various yeah the way he way he talks the way he moves just just little little things he does with his face while he talks you know the the if i didn't know better I would think that, like, this was, like, Elvis reincarnated or something. I, I know, I know. Some people say, ah, oh, it's just, he's a, he's a B-grade Elvis impersonator at best. I beg to differ. Tom Hanks. 
what, what did they do to you, buddy? Uh, I... I know this man can act. I've watched Saving Private Ryan, you know. I've seen him in stuff where he's show... Okay, um... Whoever whoever failed to talk him out of the accent seriously dude what were you doing i i don't like saying oh you know fire that person even even as a joke but like seriously just get a second opinion next time i don't know what grudge the makeup artist has against him I uh, okay uh uh he was he was he was heavy the man was was heavy so you know he makes he makes Tom Hanks look heavy but what's with the nose is he also Pinocchio I just I don't I I I would be surprised but I do hope that this isn't like the the start of the downturn for for Tom Hanks because he deserves better he's he's a good actor he's a nice guy like you know I watched some of the interviews he did for the press you know for this movie and just yeah he's he's such a nice guy you know what is it people call him America's dad yeah yeah what a dad to have what a great father figure he is for for the, the whole country so. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Um, I think this movie would have been better if Colonel Parker was in it way less. I don't hate. I know some people hate the narration. I thought that worked because it is basically him telling Elvis' story. Now that part, I I don't think it should be him telling Elvis' story. But if you're gonna go there, the narration makes sense. It works for that. But yeah, like, just, I, d I don't really know what it was that they were, because he really, he does not need to be the, the story. To, I, I get, you know, unreliable narrator, I get it, I don't think it really works. If, if there is, my, that's probably my big, my one biggest issue with this movie, is I really don't think the whole that that whole thing at all was a, a good idea. I don't have the names in front of me, but whoever played Priscilla, great job. I I saw some people didn't like that his father, that Elvis's father is played by um it's the guy who's also, you know, he was he's like a henchman in Mission Impossible 2. He is the antagonist, I forget exact count, maybe, in Moulin Rouge. I don't, I don't really know why people don't like, I, I've always thought he was great. Um, David, David Wenham? No, that sounds wrong. And anyway, I, I've liked him in all of these movies. I, I, yeah, the, the, I, I think he's memorable in all three. He's got, like, yeah, I think I saw someone say, oh, you know, I guess just, you know, uh, Baz Luhrmann can't keep, can't, can't stop putting him in, in stuff. Like, I guess I could, like, he, it didn't need to be, the, the father character doesn't, he's not that interesting, he doesn't do that much, or however you want to, but, you know, yeah, you know, if, if, you know, hypothetically, let's say that, I had to choose one of the three movies to recast him. It it would be this one. You know, he's he's just so much fun in the in the other uh, are there are there references I can do without spoiling I guess there aren't. Yeah, yeah. You're you'll have to picture them. I think those are all of the characters that I re Elvis's mother 
she the, the actress does a really great job. Like the, there was a very close relationship between you know Elvis and his mother, and yeah, you you really feel that in in this. You know, like others have said, it doesn't really. It's it's not some like you know mind blowing new kind of you know, but it it works. You know the the drama aspect of it works. The cinematography is amazing. I think I I think it makes the most sense to just go over cinematography and editing together because they really, yeah, the the interplay between them here is is completely critical to making the whole thing work and just yeah like the yeah if if I were to talk just about the cinematography at first there are these sh like in a in a normal movie in a non Lerman boring movie you know we're told Elvis is gonna play this hotel okay so we get like an establishing shot of like Here's the entrance to the hotel. Maybe the camera shows how, how big the building is. Not here, because why? Why would you, like, what, don't you want to have fun? So the camera starts out here, flies towards the hotel, and it's just like, I ugh, wow. And and I've already talked some about the, the editing, and yeah, you have these, you know, many, many shots in the one frame and you have like there's this part where the 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 spin first let's see i think it started as a roulette i think that's what it's called, the the gambling thing the spinny thing and then it turns into a spinning record and then it turns into a car tire spinning and then they drive somewhere and it's like why why are we making movies that aren't like this I I do okay I get it but I just as someone who grew up on comic books this is amazing to me this is this is how like has Baz Luhrmann done a comic book Baz, if you can hear this, please make a comic book movie. That would be incredible. That might be almost as good as this movie. I'm not sure. I, I don't know. If this, I, I'm not going to blow smoke up your ass. I don't know if this, I, th I think this might be your masterpiece, Baz. I, I don't know if you can top this. I don't know if this is toppable. I th I'd... Matchable, maybe. But toppable. <sighs> Holy crap, you did a good job on this. Okay, back to, back to the rest of my audience. Yeah, the, the... The editing at times moves very fast, and there are some scenes that are incredibly short. But over the course of the movie, there are times where the movie lets us catch our breath and just, yeah, you know, this, I didn't find this punishing to watch. I didn't find this exhausting to watch. So, you know, but I, some people definitely will. To be fair, I, you know, I watched this movie with my dad. He grew up on Elvis. He was... You know, he was, when when Elvis came out, my father was one of the teenagers going nuts over his music. You know, not not the sexual part, but the, yeah, just the, you know, it, it was it was for us straight men as well. Because he, probably more for the ladies, and I'm glad. But, yeah, like, you know, we could get into the, you know, I'm... I'm not old enough to have experienced him. I've, I've, you know, I've seen the movies, I've watched recording vid video of his shows and such, but I've never, you know, I didn't see him live. But the the yeah, you know, this this kind of stuff about like 
being a guy and being super in love with the girl, you know, yeah, it was just, and, and like at that time, you know, the, the kind of crap that white people were listening to was just this boring and, and this like kind of stuff of, yeah, you know, we have to be respectful. We have to take things seriously. And it's just like teacher's pet BS and just, and, and in comes, El I know I will grant some of the country music from back then was perfectly serviceable, but it really like Elvis changed everything. I think think that is all for the 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 technical aspects so yeah i think i've pretty much said everything non spoiler that i had to say about the movie so yeah this is this i i rate this 10 rock legends out of 10. I love it. Tender, I love it true. It unchained my heart. Do not listen to suspicious minds trying to talk you out of this. It, you know, yeah, it's, it's absolutely amazing. And with that, we are going to get into the thoughts sections, the spoilers. So, I took some notes. I didn't take as many as for, like, some other movies. But, yeah. Let's see. Right, yeah. So, I, I didn't stay through the end credits. But, without credits, it's 2 hours and 32 minutes. And, right, yeah. I noted that it's, you know, for a lot of the movie, the camera is like a shark. If it stops moving, it dies. I love that even the logos at the start are colorful. I appreciate that the snowman thing was explained early on since they keep bringing it back. I really love the build up to revealing Elvis's face to Tom. That that first that you know when he goes up on stage and plays in front of people and just like for a while we're just like we hear his voice and we see other pe we see the faces of other people trying to talk him into you know to, he's he's you know got stage fright and let's see. yeah and you know we you know before Elvis's first show we see him taking him being inspired by black music and combining the you know the sex song uh, was it was that rhythm and blues i i'm not great with with music but yeah uh, you know that and then the the gospel part and yeah i th i thought the reveal of elvis for the first performance was really impactful and yeah the the movie depicts the the you know the girls going wild with you know for his his pelvic thrusts Right, just just real quick, I want to say the moment I decided to watch this movie, you know, I, I saw that there was a trailer for an Elvis biopic, and I'm like, I mean, I didn't watch the Aretha biopic, and I love Think. I didn't watch the Elton John one, and I liked his rendition of... Dido's part of Stan. I didn't watch the Queen movie, and yeah, I've. I think I like every piece of of Queen music I've ever heard. I I don't know if that's, it's probably a good third of them or or so. I I didn't seek it out, but you know, it's it's kind of everywhere. It's in a lot of really great movies. You know, I will I will never, not laugh. When Simon Pegg shouts, kill the queen, and there is a distinct, like, sense of what did he just say before he 
explains what he means by that. But yeah, you know, for this, uh, you know, yeah. The moment that I heard Baz Luhrmann was directing, I was like, nobody else could get it. Nobody else could get the energy, the electricity of a live show of his, the reaction of the women, and just the, yeah, the you know, Elvis the God. And, yeah, I love the use of comic book panels. And, let's see. I, I really like that at that first show, like, we distinctly see the girls, like, it, it kind of moves like a, like a, like the wind, like, gradually it covers everyone. All of the women, all, you know, literally every woman at that show that isn't his mother wants to bone Elvis hard. I mean, big time. I mean, yeah. And, like, we see these shots of the men, like, the, the boyfriends and the dads, and they're like, I, I mean, I guess the music's good, but why is she reacting like, I've never seen her react like that. Maybe she has, you know, Ben Shapiro would be like, they must have a medical condition. I've, I talked to my wife, and she's not supposed to do that. And I, I really thought the the scene between Elvis and this mother was, was sweet. Like, you know, she really does just, you know, want to protect him. And she feels like this is, yeah, this could go wrong. And I really like the montage where, you know, it's, it's so cliche. It's such a cliche, cliche. I've said. I don't even watch very many of these movies and I've seen it before, but actually, yeah, I should just really, really briefly say, I think the, the Ray Charles, and Johnny Cash uh, musical biopics are also excellent. I think these might be the only three I've watched. It's just, it's not really something that I go for very much. Right, and, and obviously 8 Mile, since I'm such an Eminem fan. I, I kind of love how that movie doesn't even pretend that it's not like... Oh no! We we changed his name a little. Yeah, dude, it's it's about Eminem. It's clearly about Eminem. Eminem is playing himself. Like it could not be like, and they they like, they make Kim so unappealing, and it's like, you didn't have to do that. Like that's just it just feels mean spirited. And and yes, I I do think that both of the women in in the movie that could be read as Kim. I think they're both supposed to be Kim, just different aspects of Kim. Anyway, yeah. The cliche. Elvis's name getting bigger. You know, at first it's like, ah, oh, you know, the the name of the the um country musician, you know, at at the top and then Elvis in tiny letters, and and then Elvis gets bigger and bigger, and special guest Elvis, and and finally it's just it's the Elvis show. This is you know, and yeah, I already mentioned I love the transitions, and I thought the intercutting worked really well. I I get why some people might feel that it's just okay. Can we can we let a scene breathe? For two seconds, please. I I just thought it was, I I loved when he played Trouble. I I holy crap, that was amazing. And yeah, it it gets pretty quickly through his military service. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure that it would even have been a scene if it wasn't where he met Priscilla. But I do think you know, and that's again where it's ah right. They ah, I mean they did use the word teenager there and I mean who's thinking about exactly how old Elvis himself is at this point I mean uh, uh, just because he's old enough to do military service doesn't mean he's not still a teenager and certainly there isn't a 10 year age gap and he's not romancing a teenage girl but yeah you know they are legitimately sweet together 
And, you know, apparently, like, Priscilla and Lisa Marie Presley have both said they thought the movie was really great. And, yeah. I agree with them. I, I And that really is... I think their approval means more than almost anyone else. Now, I kind of... Like, the... The Christmas show was funny and it was like like holy crap the kind of stuff that he put on for that show and and the you know it is kind of like after a while it almost almost starts getting tiring watching like pasty old white dudes who have some kind of power over things that are going on being like harumph this this elvis is not doing what we're saying he's allowed to do it all he's constantly going outside of the 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 boundaries of you know like like i i was a little surprised that we never saw one of them like pop out a monocle i guess they came pre-popped all the monocles because they were so shocked by this elvis fellow but yeah like i don't know i kept finding it funny and just yeah and i i love the the protest song he sang at the at the Christmas show. I do feel really bad about for for those camera people. Like, you know, is okay. We've we've made sure all the all the lighting is okay and the acoustics and everything is perfect for this. Oh, you want us to turn the cameras 180 degrees and just like magically immediately make sure you know like do the white balance and and the the uh, focus pulling. And all this stuff, and and was there even enough light there? It's just like, as someone who knows what it's like to film with a camera, that bugged me a little bit. But then, I mean, Baz Luhrmann directed that scene, and he knows he clearly knows how to use a camera. So, I don't know. I get, yeah, it was a great song. It was it was an amazing moment. I yeah, let's see. Yeah, so the the gambling debt of I'm gonna keep calling him Tom. I am not sure I really caught I I I realized that he was he was Dutch, so he's from Holland. Or the Netherlands. As opposed to Elvis, who is from the Nether Loins. Um yeah, I I thought the movie spent enough time on his gambling debt. I didn't really need to see more of that, but yeah. And Let's see. Yeah, I I I, I saw some people say that the movie spends too long on the whole Las Vegas what was it International Hotel? Um, how he keeps playing there for for year after year and never does get to do his international tour of actually traveling around the world. I don't know. I I didn't feel like it it spent too long. Yeah, I thought the movie did a pretty good job of showing Tom manipulating Elvis and without it getting to be just, like, I mean, yeah, we're in the spoiler section. If you go to watch this movie, you probably already know that, you know, I mean, okay, Elvis died already. You know, a lot of, a lot of, Musicians only get their biopic after they die. That doesn't necessarily mean, but no. In addition to that, he died young. His daughter was really like, what is eight or nine years old? That's a, that's no age to lose your father. And you know he died because of the betrayal of Tom and all these drugs and. You know, there's this brief bit where, like, some media personality is laughing at him and saying, oh, you know, he already is a washed up, you know, musician, so it'll be real easy to play one in A Star is Born. You know, I just, yeah, I, I think the movie does a good job at not, uh, not just letting that weigh down the movie. And 
yeah, uh, the the death threats and you know the the attack, which turned out to be from like an overeager fan or two. But yeah, I gotta admit, I actually I had forgotten that, but I think that I think there were death threats. Yeah, and yeah, I appreciate that they didn't feel the need to dwell on Elvis getting paranoid. You know, he like. He jumps out of bed and grabs a gun and opens the door and he's like, he thinks there's someone out there, you know, clearly, clearly there isn't, like, he heard, he imagined hearing that. And, and we get that brief little montage of all the people that have been assassinated, you know, in, in a short span of time in America, right around that same time, you know, and we see him shoot TVs and, yeah. And it's really heartbreaking when Priscilla leaves, but you can also understand. And it is, like, that. that's the kind of thing where, like, some of these really make the, the girlfriend or wife or such out to be really awful. But, you know, the, yeah, this one, it did, it, I, I guess it's possible that part of it was that they wanted her to like the movie, but... Still, you know, I I felt I could I could believe it that that she was that she couldn't stand being you know because of all these drugs she she needed to to leave she couldn't keep watching this keep watching him do this to or yeah that was also a thing I briefly wanted to comment on I saw one critic at least say that the movie kind of takes away his agency is basically saying no 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 he didn't do drugs other people pumped him full of drugs you know there's that bit where tom says no matter what he has to be on stage tonight and it's supposed to be like oh so it wasn't because elvis was like no i have to i have to go out there no it was because he was you know that is also like as far as i know at least he did actually take this, you know, these drugs himself without, like, yeah, it, it wasn't that someone was, like, forcing it into his body. But the, but the, you know, Tom Parker f pushing him and forcing him to watch, watch, forcing him to make movies, you know, he, he says, oh, but you didn't want to watch him if he didn't sing. Yeah, but Elvis wanted to make other movies, though, and, like, if, if I, I uh, it has been years since I read it, but I read that it was because the people, yeah, I, I guess Tom, uh, I, him, maybe others, but basically the idea was, if we put Elvis in family-friendly movies, with no swearing, and where he's smiling, and he's singing, the non-threatening songs, that is, you know, the ones that are just about love, not the, the the harsher ones, then we can sell that movie to the entire family. But if we let him do these more gritty and gutsy kind of, like, harsher movies that he wanted to make, you know, ah, we can only sell that to, you know, the adults that really want that kind of thing. We're just, we're not going to make as much money, so... He was pushed into making a bunch of these, and and it, you know, breaks your heart. And and some of these movies, they're not really that bad. And and like, I forget. It's been so many years. I don't. I don't think I've watched a movie featuring the real Elvis Presley in almost twenty years by now. But I, I've, they were on VHS, you know, and yeah, my VCR. So yeah. It's not that I stop loving them, but yeah, I I forget if you can tell some of the time that like his heart isn't quite in it. But yeah, you know the the yeah I I you know it's so awful when when someone who has so much passion and creativity to share with the world and they're forced into doing something that they don't really want to be doing. And let's see. Yeah, uh, Elvis fires Tom, and Tom demands the money. And 
yeah, and when Priscilla tries to talk Elvis into going to the clinic, always just also just absolutely heartbreaking. And I I thought it worked well that the movie is bookended by the last performance that he apparently completed. You know, it's the it's one of the very first things we see, and it's one of the very last things we see as this just you know. Yeah, it just, it, it, because at the end of the day, you know, he, you know, Tom narrates that, no, 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 it was because he just, he couldn't get enough, you know, he, he loved the audience and he insisted on performing and just, you know, that's, that's how Tom rationalizes that it, he doesn't think it was him who killed, who killed Elvis. And then we get the, the, I believe it's called a postscript where it just briefly says, you know, this is exactly what happened with Tom after and yeah, you know, so so the but but yeah, at the end of the day as as tragic as his end was and as just like Yeah, the 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 movie isn't about look at how you know it's not emotional porn, at least in my opinion. I I suppose others might beg to differ, but it is a celebration of this man's talent and his life, and just like there's he 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 you know performed and recorded some absolutely incredible songs and you know thankfully today we can just you know go yeah here, here on YouTube a bunch of them are you know I, I remember before YouTube I remember listening to Elvis Presley records my my father used to have a, a record player and he would play LPs of Elvis the Beatles and I think there were also some some Danish rock bands. I I don't remember any of their names though. But yeah. So Elvis and the Beatles have you know since since I was a child that was like for for a chunk of my life I did not understand what people saw in like pop music because like you know I'd be at home in the weekend and you know, we'd listen to hours of Elvis and the Beatles, and then I'd go out, you know, I'd, I'd go to school, and everybody was listening to this, like, I'm not gonna single anyone out, but just, you know, pop songs of the 90s, and I was like, I mean, you know that you could just buy, like, I used to have one, I, I don't know where it is anymore, unfortunately, but I used to have, like, a CD of like I I guess I had like 21, and it was just like the 21 of the top hits of Elvis. So you know you don't have to like you don't need to have a record player and a bunch of LPs. You can go out by you know today I I uh, what what do people listen to music on I I something not iPad iPod I want to say it's called you know I I I'm not much of a music person so but. And usually, what I listen to, I listen on the on on computer, but yeah, you know, with speakers and such, so you can really appreciate it. I, I don't really get the thing with you know, put a little thing in your ear and blast it into your ear and just like okay, to each their own. But just like you know that Elvis and the Beatles are an option, right? Like you don't you don't have to listen to the it's just yeah, so. Yeah, I, I thought this movie did a really great job of, uh, you know, just, yeah, a, as a tribute to Elvis, the god. And, yeah. I don't personally think it needed to be shorter. Uh, I, th I think basically my only real, you know, what what's the saying? No notes, except... What what's the deal with Tom Parker? Like I I feel like you know first of all the the entire just just like 
like cast an actor who has that accent naturally or drop the accent and just say oh I don't know he sounds weird to people in the movie I guess he doesn't sound weird to people watching the movie whatever you know I mean, it's, we're used to that in in English speaking movies you know like if you watch a movie about like a historical thing either people speak in the actual language and there are subtitles for the rest of us or they just speak in English so we we're we're okay with that we can live with that you know i guess if if you insist on like making you know the the fat suit or or that kind of thing but just the nose just maybe that's what he looked like but it just it it really feels weird watching the movie and and trying to to like yeah i don't know um I don't think he should have been a storyteller. I think they, yeah, I already talked about the the casting and the makeup and the accent, but that's basically it. So, so yeah, that is it for this video. So please hit me up in the comments. Let me know what was your favorite part. What is your favorite, you know, biopic? Doesn't have to be about a musician. Can be about something else, someone else. Do you think that Baz Luhrmann went way over board with this, with the stylistic stuff in this, or do you think that it worked? What's your favorite Elvis song? What was your favorite remix of an Elvis song that they played either in the movie or during the end credits? For me, it was probably. Let's see. I think it's called The King and I by Eminem and CeeLo Green, featuring CeeLo Green. And yeah, yeah. If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page. One, two, or more links to stuff like relevant playlists on screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and going into spoiler-filled thoughts on a movie every week, and one for the most recent episode of the current Disney Plus MCU show, which these days is Ms. Marvel, and one for the most recent episode of the current Disney Plus Star Wars live-action show, which these days is Obi-Wan Kenobi. So, if you like this video, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog. You can catch my video next week. And, yeah. So long, everybody.